So I'm gonna. <laughs> All right, cool. All right. So bat pattern butterfly. Okay, these are the main ones we trade, and I want to go through why later. But these are the main ones we trade. So there's the only ones you need picked for this strategy. Now, if you go away and click all the other ones and find some other strategy, more power to you. But our consistency is based upon using bat patterns and using butterfly butterfly patterns. Okay, so you want to click that, and then bullish and bearish. So we're looking for buys and we're looking for sells. Right, so we have both of those ticked. Right, number two, security. What currency pairs do you guys want the Monaro AI robot to find you guys? So we have all, always we always have all the majors ticked, and then these are the ones that I have ticked that are minors. Now you don't want to have all of these ticked because half of these uh, currency pairs your broker doesn't even have them. The other half are really volatile, and the rest like you have to risk huge amounts to make some money. Right? These are the only ones you guys really need. So if you want to take a screenshot or a print screen of this, by all means do so. Um. Um, so that you have these, right? So make sure you have all of these ticked. Take a take a photo, whatever. Do what you need to do to make sure you have that. And for the person, I think it was Anthony. My settings are: don't worry too much about the top. But at the moment, we are on mature. I'm gonna be on mature because we got. Are we gonna gonna be going back and forth from mature to incomplete? But in terms of time frames, fifteen minute, thirty minute, one hour, four hour. Okay, we're only trading bat and butterfly. We're not trading commodities, metals, bonds, indices. We don't want to see anything. It's just forex. And we're doing, we want to find buys and we want to find sales. Okay. That's it. Now, in order to save it, because I know some of you are on your phone, just go where it says to the third icon where it says view, have it has a drop down, call it what you want. So I don't know who was said that, but they're on the iPhone. So you can so you call it iPhone, right? And then you press plus, it will now save it. So if I click on iPhone, everything that I just saved on iPhone settings will pop up. Okay. So that means now when you get home, whoever that was who was on their phone, you can literally go to your iPhone, click, and everything, all the settings you just made while being on this training will automatically pop up on your laptop when you sign in on Monaro over there, okay? So that's how you save your settings. Um, I can't access my Monaro. It's asking for pin notification, which I forgot. Okay, so with Monaro, if, uh, uh, look, if it says, does it say your account has been configured to a two-factor authentication? Please type your six-digit entry code now. Now, if it says create a new one, just type in one, two, three, four, five. And then it's going to ask you to repeat it. One, two, three, four, five. And then it will just let you in. So I just made one up just while we was on here. While we, well, as soon as I logged in, I just created one. And then it reset you it, every day. Your Monaro ones resets unless you change it. Right. So you just have to keep redoing it. Just keep making up and making up the pin. Okay. Um, it's to make sure that people aren't sharing accounts and not on the same account at the same time, stuff like that. Right. So now that your thing is set up, let's go through what Monaro is actually showing you guys, right? So the first thing is, now that we've got our settings, now we can move on, right? So the first things we want to just identify is just what are the little thing intricacies of the AI, all right? The intricacy number one is that, let me go to let me go to training. Um, okay, and let me click on gold, for example, right? So this is gold, right? So basically it tells us, hey, listen, well, your entry is at 2018. Now, how do we know it's a buy? Several reasons. One, it has a buy arrow and it's also green. Green means buy. Red arrow means sell. That's confirmation number one that it's a buy. Number two, let's say you didn't see your colorblind. Let's say you're colorblind. Are, is the target one and two above entry? Yes. So that means it's a buy. We expect price to go up, right? If your targets are below your entry, that means we're looking at a sell. Hopefully that makes sense. Then it gives you your risk management, your stop loss, your target one and your target two, right? Very, very, very simple, okay? So now we're gonna go through the three-part strategy, but that's basically what Monaro is. And those are the timeframes we have and blah, 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 blah. Now, I'm gonna find the trade that we was looking at before. Um, I believe it was on incomplete and it was AUD, NZD. Uh, I haven't checked the trade as of yet since we've been in it. Uh, so this was the buy that we was looking at, right? So this was the buy. So there's two buys on AD NZD. In fact, let me just go to AD NZD on the chart. So if we, again, once you find a trade on Monitor, if you want to see a bigger version of it, go to chart, type in the currency pair. We tend to use Awanda. So, so AUD NZD, you will see that Awanda pops up. You click Awanda. And then over here, you have your settings. So which current, which strategy do you want to see right now? So we want to see our bat pattern. So there's two bat patterns, as you guys see here. There's one here, which has a higher entry, 
and then there's a lower one down here which has a lower entry so we're going to mark up both of these and see which one gets respected and which one gives us the um, step four which is the break of structure and then fair value gap and that's the one we're going to take we're going to lose that's the one we're taking right so right now this is the one that i initially found so this is the one we marked up together so now everyone should understand oh by the way if you want to get rid of this once you found it you see here there's like a there's like a um a bullet point button like if i do that this disappears so it gives some of your screen back it's, this is very good when it's on your phone because sometimes this takes up your whole screen so you can click this get rid of it and now it won't be there right so let's say for example i want to put this back so oh, i only want to see this one currency pair and then i want to get rid of the toolbar now my phone my, now it's clean okay so let's go over the fact that we are looking for a buy and let's also go over the fact that we're looking for a sell okay so i'm gonna start from the sell and then we're gonna work our way up to why we entered the buy towards the sell that sounds complicated i'm gonna explain but let's just do it together right so i'm going to delete everything and we're gonna draw this whole thing up together so there's no confusion okay so step number one and in fact let me get my let me get my notes um I don't know what page I left it on. Bear with, please. Cool. Where are we? Okay, I think this is, is this a wonder? Yeah, cool. All right, so let's do this together. So 50 minute time frame. That was, that's what the trade was called. And now we're going to mark this up together, all right? So these are our rules. All right, so really and truly, this should say four-part strategy now because we've, you know, Eddie's been a blessing to our community, so four-part strategy. Um, but can we just give a big shout-out to Eddie, please? Can everyone just type Eddie or Pipsa in the chat? Because um, I've been trading since 2018, um, past multiple funded accounts, but the stuff I've learned from Eddie in the last four months that I wish I knew when I was new. I wish I knew about the value gap, I wish I knew about the morning strategy. I would be I would be rich at this point. What I had to do is learn discipline. So shout out to Eddie because his final confirmation has actually saved us from losing trades and given us mountains of extra confirmations to take good trades. So I would definitely want to give him his flowers and say thank you for that. Um, so we're going to apply everything. We're going to apply our three steps and then we're going to add Eddie's fair value gap to it to confirm whether it's a good trade, yes or no, okay? So, step one, okay? Did Monara call the trade? Absolutely. But so, the reason that's a confirmation is because some of you get big and bossy. You copied one trade, you made some money, you took a trade without a stop loss, made some money, and now you think you're the guy, and you think you're the girl. And then you end up blowing your money, and then you end up blowing your account, talking about Forex doesn't work. But you didn't actually use a signal, and you didn't actually use a service. You just tried to... I made money. I get it. I'm not going to be coachable no more. I'm just going to do my own thing. Don't cry to me about that. Okay. Did Monara call the trade? Yes or no? If you're going to go on Monara and you're going to want to use it properly, did it call the trade? Yes. Is it a bat pattern? Yes. Okay. Where was the entry? 1.0748. Right. 0748. So I'm going to draw a line on training view because it's just easier to see. Right. 1.07. Four, eight, and I'm going to call it Manara, right? And I'm going to make the line white so everyone can see it, okay? Did Manara call the trade? Yes, no problem, okay? Is there an institutional candle? Now, this is the part where people get confused and they always want this explained. So I'm going to try to explain it again in a very, very simple manner, okay? At the bottom... So this would be the bottom. Um, let me find a decent arrow of sorts. Um, it shouldn't be this hard to find an arrow. All right, cool. This is Eddie's favorite. No, I left that to Eddie. Eddie can have that one. Uh, all right. So, do you see at the bottom of this wave, right? At the bottom of this wave that there is a cell candle that's small. And then immediately after that cell candle, there's a massive engulfing buy candle, right? There's a massive candle 
that's bigger. That's uh, the opposite candle that is bigger than the one that came before it. So do you guys see, if I was to highlight this area, that we have, okay, okay. Um, I forgot I have my settings on this. One second. Uh, extend right. Let me just get rid of that for a sec. All right. The you, it's new people especially, right? And people that don't know about institutional candles. Do you guys see how there was a small, there's a small cell candle and then a massive buy candle that came after it at the bottom of this wave. If you see that and it's clear to you, you can spot it and you're new, type one 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 in the chat so I know you guys can see it. Okay. Okay, awesome. All right. So that's called an institutional candle. It's an area where price was manipulated. I, I, I will, I'll walk you through because we have time. I don't have to rush it. Does everyone see how, if you've been for the basics, they have taught you, and it's not bad, but they've taught you levels of resistance, right? Like this area was used as a floor, right? And then, and then all these people were buying from here, trying to make money, trying to buy, trying to buy, trying to buy, trying to buy, trying to buy. Trying to buy, right? All these people are trying to buy from this area, hoping that price moves upwards. What did the banks do? They manipulated price, took everyone's stop loss out, and then said, we're going to buy it. But we're going to use your money to make money. And we're going to take your stop loss and take your money. And now we're going to go and make money with your money, right? And they left an institutional candle. They left a the candle. that This candle shouldn't really be here. It, it wasn't necessary. But they just wanted to steal these people's money <laughs> so they can make money with their money and rob them basically. So they, but they leave evidence of what they've done behind, which is this institutional candle, right? And then these areas of candles are areas that they're going to come back later on and hit to continue a potential trend or whatever. So as you guys can see, they robbed all these people here with this candle, came back a few days later or a few hours later and said, thank you for the money. And then bought without them. So it took their money, stole it, <laughs> made money, came back and collected the money they stole and made more money. And then finally, and then sold and went the opposite direction. So a bunch of people who don't know about what we teach you here at EA Economy or in our little mastermind community got robbed. And we're telling you, don't do that. You want to enter where the banks enter, which is here. Okay. It's called an institutional candle or order blocks. All right, depending on your terminology. I say institutional candle, that's how I was raised. But if you hear someone say order blocks, that's basically what they're saying as well. Okay, so this area got pinged, price got hit, money was made from the banks. They come, they came and collected the money that they stole in the market over here and then pumped with it. Okay, so that's an institutional candle. So do we see one of those over here? Now, on the 50 minute time frame, yes, technically. This would be considered a 15 minute institutional candle, but these candles are kind of long. So we're going to see if we can find a smaller version of that if we go down half a time frame. Now, if we go down half a time frame, what do you guys see? It looks a bit better. We see that on top of the Monara entry, look at this candle here, right? So there's a buy to sell. This whole area, price manip was manipulated upwards in this little section, and then they sold at the top of the wave, right? So what we're going to do, we're going to highlight this area and I'm just going to double click it so I don't have to do this and I'm going to extend it right, right? So we're going to highlight this, right? So now, do you want to, no, okay, cool. So now do you guys see how on top of our Monara entry, there's a zone, there's an institutional candle that's just waiting there to be hit. Does everyone see that? Okay, so that's confirmation number one. The banks, look, I'll give an example, right? I, think about what I just explained to you, and now I'm going to show you logically what they're doing, right? Uh, and then there was light. Okay, cool. So all the people that were here selling, saying, yay, this level of resistance, yeah, woo, 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 this level of resistance, what happened? They got chefed out of the market. Then they got shift out of, and then these people, people that were smart, got shift out again. And then it sold. So now we're waiting for AUD NZD to come back to this area to come and collect the money that they stole 
and we're going to enter with the banks. Okay. So that's an institutional candle, right? Which is step one. Did Monaro call it? Okay, step two. Did Monaro call it? Is there an institutional candle? Yes. We have to go down a time frame to find it, but yes. Okay. Now, okay, question number three. Is there an 88%? In other words, is the Monaro entry close to a bank major sell or buy area? Now, I'm going to explain to you guys what a Fibonacci entry is, but let me draw it out first so you guys can see it. So, okay, let me do this. Does everyone see on the third icon down? So one, two, three, and then you click out. And then there's something called Fib Retracement. It's called Fib Retracement. I need you guys to click this and I need you to just draw it somewhere on your screen. Okay, your one is going to look funky. It's going to look like this. It's going to look like that. And it's going to have a background and it's going to look mad scary like this. Yeah, it's going to look, it's going to look rainbow colored. All right, you don't worry about it. Okay, we're just going to delete everything. We're not going to delete everything, but we're going to get rid of this. We're going to get rid of this. We're going to get rid of this. We're going to get rid of that. We're going to get rid of this. And all you want to see is 0 0.88 in red, 0 0.786 in blue, 0, which is going to be your bottom, and then 1, which is going to be your top. And then you're going to get rid of the background. And it should look nice and clean like this. Never going to have to mess with this again. Just go to templates, go to save as, call it what you want, and press save, and it will save, okay? Did that make sense, okay? How do I watch the recording? The record this video will be put on YouTube after the call. Um, So that's fine. I don't like banks anymore, uh -huh. What time frame are you on now? This is on the 15 minute time frame, but I don't know when you asked that. Um, Do we look for institution candles around? Yes, you do, that's the whole point of why. Don't worry, uh, whoever that is, it'll be posted in the main chat. You can follow me once I post it in the main chat. Don't worry about it, you won't miss it, promise, okay? Do we look for the institutional candle? Yes. Always look for an institutional candle that's close to the Monaro entry, right? So guys, make sure you take a screenshot of this if you haven't got it set up, especially if it's someone who has to go now, take a screenshot, okay? So you can do the settings when you get back or watch the video, okay? So do that. And now, if let me explain to you guys what it does. So I'm gonna give you guys multiple examples of what it does. So in this particular example, let's say we're trying to go for a buy, right? And this is the low of the move. And this is the high of the move. You want to find out where the banks are going to push price to or the lowest or the highest price banks are going to push price to to now continue the wave, right? So it could remember, it's in the clues in the name, Fibonacci retracement. We're waiting for the price to come back a certain amount of area so that we can continue in the flow, okay? So we're going to go, We want, let's say, for example, Manal calls a buyer over here. So we want to say, okay, cool. Manal's calling the buy. We missed the initial push, the initial pump, as you guys call it. So where's where are they going to pull price back to so that we can hopefully get back in the trade with them and go for a buy, right? So now we would uh, try and wait for price to get to an 88%. Now, this particular, particular trade didn't hit that. But let's go find you guys some examples so you can see it in motion, right? So this is a great indicator that you guys can use to justify an entry so this is might not be the best time frame to do this on so let's just go to like a higher time frame right so for example if i go from this high to this low or i can even go from the high of the high of that of that move do you guys see how the price sold on ad NZD? sold completely like it dropped but price retraced right and it hit what the 88%. So that's the highest price the banks could push this price to without it turning into a buy, without it being like breaking of trend, right? So this is the highest point they could have pushed it to. So they said, okay, cool. It hit the 88%. We're now going to set it. All right. I'll give you another example for us for a buy, right? So let's go from a buy position. Um, Let's look for a buy, I guess. These are equal low, so that's not going to work. Uh... I need a good buyer. Let's just try this one, I guess. Right. So we're going to go from this low to this high, drag across. The banks pushed it to the 88%. It didn't break it. The candles closed above it or on it. And then what happened? The banks made their money to call these people out. And then they said, all right, that's the lowest we can push price to. And then they bought it. Right. So that's a major confirmation. If you get in at the 88%, more time, you're going along with the structure of the move. 
and you're going along with the wave. You're going along with the flow of money, right? If it breaks the 88%, if price was to break it and close below it, then you would know, hey, I probably shouldn't be looking for a buy anymore because they've gone past their institutional level of trading. Like, so now they're going now the banks are gonna be in a loss trying to make money. It you it, it before it got here, it was about getting AED NZD for the lowest price possible so they can make the most money out of it. But if it breaks to 88 percent now, I don't think they're looking to buy anymore because now it's that now they're just running the, the currency pair into the ground, it's probably not gonna buy anymore, right? So if it breaks your 88 percent that's like a big red flag to not go not try and buy in that direction, whatever direction that is, right? So in this particular case, we focus over here and we go back to the 50 minute time frame which the trade was called on. Is there an 88%? So we're going to draw from the high because we're going for a sell, right? So price is already sold and now price is retracing, right? So we want to go from the high. We want to go to the low of the move. So the low of the wave and we want to drag it across. Does everyone see how our 88% is right on top of our Manara entry? Does everyone see how our institutional candle area is right touching on the 88%? Does everyone see now we have three confirmations that if price hits here, fundamentally, now we could still lose, but we have three reasons to sell AD, AD, should it go here. Does all the new people understand that which is how we got to this conclusion? One, institutional account, well, one, Manara called the trade. Number two, institutional candle. Number three, 88% on the Fibonacci level. Does everyone see that? Does all new people, do you see it? And we're going to go through multiple examples, but do you kind of get it at least, bare minimum? Cool. Someone said, how do you know where to put your Fib retracement? From the high to the low. That's That's it or from the low to the high, depending on the move. So example, now that we've identified that this is where ultimately we expect price to go, I will now explain why we took a buy up to this area, right? So again, we was on a one minute time frame. Uh, for those of you that understand any strategy, okay, you know that we look for a break of structure, right? So structure was broken here. And then structure was broken here, right here, right? So you, all of us understand that structure was broken. So we expect price to do what? Come back and fill these areas that and give us a fair value gap that we can now trade to the upside, right? So price, price broke structure. We looked for the fair value gap, the lowest point of that fair value gap down here would be here between, because it's the first three candles, so one, two, and three. So I just use the gap from here to when this candle came here, and that's what price is currently fighting right now. For those of you that understand Eddie's strategy. Now, I'm not going to go through his strategy completely because he has a whole session on that. I think his session is even tomorrow. So if you want to understand more about fair value gap and stuff like that, tomorrow, 8 p.m., be on this call, okay? But there's a fair value gap right here. Number two, we go from the low, in this case, and we go to the high. Of the move, does everyone see how there's an 88% level in this area, right? 88% level in this area, so that's number one. And then last but not least, does everyone see how there's an institutional candle right here? If I make it a different color so you guys can see it. Okay. So what do we have? We have a fair value gap. Inside the fair value gap, we have an institutional candle on the on the one minute time frame. Inside of this whole mechanism, we also have an eight eight percent. So we have three confirmations that this is a potential buy. Right. So now all we're waiting for is for hopefully price to push out of this area, and then give us a trade up to the upside where our Manara entry is. Now I haven't watched this. I don't know what my stop loss is. It was initially, so I might be taking out this trade. I don't know. Oh no, no, it's fine. Fine. So my stop loss has nowhere near been hit, right? So we got in a bit, I think a little bit higher than this, right? So now if I go to the chat, um, uh, so yeah, this was it. No, that's not it. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go. So this was a trade. So it was uh seven to uh seven to 
7256, right? So I'm going to go here. I'm going to get my long, right? Don't know exactly where it entered, but where was the stop loss? 72, stop loss, 7256. Whoops, let me do that again. Uh, okay, here we go. 7256 and the entry 7286. My bad. Okay. So the entry was 7286. There you go. Okay. So this was our trade, right? We wait for the fair value gap to get hit. We entered and then we entered around about here and we're waiting for price to bounce off this area, God willing. All right. And carry us up to the Monaro entry. Now, how can we do this? Remember, I said I was going to explain to you guys. Why you can do this with more confidence? Well, one, Monara has called this sell. We know this sell fundamentally has four reasons to sell from up here. So we now know, okay, the AI said it's going to go out there because it's going to sell from there. But we also found institutional reasons why price very well might go out there. So now because of that, we now have a trade that we can focus on. Okay, cool. Now that we know where price is going, can we potentially hitch a ride with it? Right. So then that's why we went down to a smaller time frame. We found a break of structure, frame found a break of structure. We waited for price to come back to the fair value gap. Why? What's the move that caused the breaking structure initially? It was this buy, which Eddie tends to do this. He tends to highlight it and he tends to, I've been on so many of his calls. He tends to go, guys, wait, hold on. Where's his pen? Where's his pen? I'm going to do Eddie right now. All right. He said he highlights it and he's, and he said, oh, this is a terrible color, but yeah. He goes, guys, this whole move you can use as your fair value gap, right? So what are you going to do? Use the premium level, right? This is why it's good to pay attention. This is, it's good to pay attention, okay? So that's what Eddie teaches, right? So the most premium level was this fair value gap. The first three candles, one, two, and three. So that's the gap. That's the, that's the imbalance. That's the straight buy candle that didn't have any cells in it, right? So from this buy candle to this buy candle here, that gap in between, Fair value gap. But inside of that, we also have an institutional candle. Inside of that, we also have an 88%, which all confirm technically that price should do what? Should do what? Because there's no promises in this Forex thing, as many of you have found out, right? There's no promises. But fundamentally, it should buy, right? So if it buys from here, then we can buy up to an error we know price should sell from because Monara told us, our 88% told us, our institutional candle told us, and our Fair value gap, which hasn't yet appeared, has told us. Now, here's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through another trade that we took earlier this last week to explain to you how you now enter a trade once you guys know that the area has been hit. So this is the trade we took last week, right? And I'm going to show you why we entered. I can't show you why we entered now because it's not, at it's not at entry for me to discuss that with you. So let's go to a previous trade we did in the week. Did anyone in the chat who's currently here take NZD, Swiss last week. Last week, we we didn't we won the trade, but did anyone take it? We did our we did our training on it last week. And then we entered last week, and we all made money last week. Is there anyone on the call who took NCD Swiss last week? Just me and Marcus. Okay, all right, and Tyler G. Okay, fine. Let's go through why we won this, and then I'm gonna show you guys why we entered so that you guys can see it real time, okay? Because I can't show you that now because again, as I said before, price is not at entry, right? So let's delete all of this. I'm gonna copy this quickly before I delete it. All right, cool. Um, whoops, okay. So this is where we entered, I believe. So let's go over why we entered. So the Monaro called it, uh, I think, let me make sure I get the right entry. Which, which one was it? Uh, okay, this is the this is the institutional account. Okay, cool. So Manara recorded and said sell from here. Manara recorded. I don't know what the um the entry was, but just take my word for it. Manara recorded. That's why we was even in the train in the first place, right? So the third confirmation would be, all right, is there? Did Manara record it? Yes. Is an institutional candle? Yes. Let's highlight it. Does everyone see? Especially new people. At the top of the move, there's a candle that rubbed people. This candle took out all the people that were selling here. Took their money clean. All, all the people that sent in the Asian session said, no, your money's mine. And then it made money without them. So we highlight it. Okay. Do you guys see how that area got whipped? 
Price hit it. And then they come collected the money that they stole. And then they kept going. Okay. Confirmation number one. Confirmation number two. Is that it's a new candle? Yes. Is that an 88%? Let's check. We're going to go for this higher. And now we're going to go for a sell. So we're going to drag it downwards because we're trying to find where price is going to retrace up to so that it continues to sell. Right. So we're going to drag it in a down motion. Okay. Does everyone see how our 88% is inside the zone? It's inside the institutional area. Right. That's two confirmations plus Monaro. So that's three confirmations. Now, why and how? Did we enter this trade? Step four, okay? We didn't just enter. Now, there were some people in the chat who was like, I'm busy. Can I just do a sell limit? I said, you can if you're busy. But if you have time to watch it, you might want to watch it. So, and I explained why. Because again, you might get taken out. Blah, blah, and blah, blah. Here's what happened. Price smashed through our entry. Absolutely obliterated. Went past the 88%. Went past the institutional candle. Went past everything. Right, smashed it. So we said, and I told people, you should not be in this trade. Why? Because structure has not been broken. If you've been on ADD, ADD's call, we know that price is going to reverse once there is a break of structure. So here was the last low. So while this was booming, I, I sent a screenshot and I said, I said, no one should be in a sell right now unless you put a buy sell limit. But no one should be, you watching it, should be in a sell right now. Right, because price structure has not been busted yet. Now, what was the move that broke structure? It was this move here that was caused by this candle and then that power move, this whole move here. So the fair value gap in between here and here was the area that we looked at. So I'm gonna draw this down to there and make it different color. Right? And now we entered the trade. Right. We went for a short. Our stop loss was above this high here. Two, three pips. And then we swung that trade all the way down. All the way down here. And the evidence for that is still in the chat right now. So this was like a fair pit move that we caught on Monara because we waited for price to hit our Monara entry, cause a fair value gap, and then we took it. Right, because we didn't want to be a part of the masses that got swiped out. So, yes, it's great that our entry got hit. That's amazing. Thank you, Monara. But has structure been broken? Because unless it has, we're not taking the trade. That is for those of you that understand Eddie's strategy, does that make sense? Well, I just explained that. And I saw someone say AED and Z tapped them out. So we'll check it in a minute. But does it was well, what I'm talking about make sense? How'd you get tapped out? I'll stop losses down here. Guys, use the stop loss given to you. <laughs> the low is here. So if your stop loss to be anywhere higher than this is, is, is crazy. Your stop loss should be below. Okay? One, two, hold on. Two, seven, just so I make sure I'm not actually the one in trouble here. Hold on. What did I say, Mike? I don't want to say I told you so and I didn't tell you so. What did it, what did, one, seven, two, five, six. Right? I don't, let me just confirm that I'm in the right. Seven, two, I don't feel bad for you. <laughs> I, I was gonna take it back. I was gonna take it back. Maybe, maybe it's me. Maybe I didn't give the right, the right. No, I gave it. I, I gave the right. <laughs> if you got stopped out, then you, you didn't. You know, whatever. Okay. Um, but yeah. So this, you know, our stop loss is down here, All right? So hopefully, you, you know, you look good. He's got me scared. Let me check my trade. Hold on, one second. I know it's not professional to do. I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay. Anyway. All right. Um. Cool, guys. Please, please use. The stop loss we give you is we don't make it up it's, it's it's for a reason um it's one thing if we all lose that's fine like we lose whatever trading but if you lose unnecessarily that's annoying because now we that's one less success story we have as educators and it's, you know, can you imagine like we're human beings like 10 of you can say oh i won the trade and if one of you say you lost it i'm going to talk to the one that lost it and be like how <laughs> okay so please please make sure that you copy what we give you, because it's, it's, we don't make it up, okay? The re I'll, I'll even go as far as to explain. The reason why this stop loss was below the entry is because I know that it's going to try and fill this whole area potentially, right? So our stop loss is below it. Secondly, I copied Eddie. I normally would have done this, right? I normally, normally would have done that. And Eddie said, don't do that, right? Give it a pip or more below because the odds are it's going to try to take you out. 
So he said this on his, one of his last calls. And he said also, I don't like having 2.5s or 2.4s. And I thought it's just ADHD, but it made sense. So now I give myself an extra pip and now I'm deep below. Why? Everyone needs to remember that we are actually on the one minute time frame. Do you understand that regular Forex traders don't use free pip stop losses? It's only because we have Eddie that we've all like become accustomed to like free pip stop loss and five pip stop loss. Most people's stop losses are 30 pips. 30, 20, 25 pips move. Like that's their stop loss. So when you can afford to give yourself one more pip space. Do you know what I mean? So that's something just to think about. I don't, you can take it, you can leave it, but I'm just trying to educate you so that you guys are profitable long term. Okay. So we've discussed the Monaro entry. We've discussed why we are looking for the sell. Okay. We have discussed why we are looking where we why where we are in the buy, and then now we're gonna wait to see what happens when price hits this area. Once it hits the area and it sells, we're, we're gonna wait for the breaker structure, wait for the fair value gap, and then we're gonna take it. So good willing, um, and again we pray that this this the hope is I'll give you a, the realism of this. The hope is <laughs> we could lose this trade because it's getting close to like nine ten o'clock. But the hope is, is that this buys before we get to like 9, 10-ish. Because there's a chance that spread's going to try to be evil and take us out. So, God willing, we make some money before then. But whatever, if we lose, we lose, right? If this wins without us, then at least it will still be a learning moment for you guys. All right? So, let's look at another trade. Um, And I, let's go over the gold one we saw. And then we'll end it. But I want to go over the gold one because the gold one looked juice. So, I want to just see. Um, it was on Mature. It was gold. Okay, I know Hugo doesn't like me looking at gold, but I'm gonna look at gold anyway. I know that's a, I know, I know that's, a that's a gold mine thing, but me, I just check still. All right, cool. So, oh, what have it? Okay. Hmm. Why do I already have this? My time. I already have it marked up. Why do I already marked up? I don't even look at gold. Okay. Well, hey. We have it marked up. All right, cool. So let's go through it anyway. Okay. So, um, huh. okay, well, okay. We'll go through. I'm actually shocked. Okay, fine. No problem. So let's just put this here. Right. Where was the Monara entry? Right. So the Monara entry was uh, to a 2018 80. Right. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to go to 2018 and we're going to go to 80. So 2018, 1880. I'm just going to be specific for the sake of this call, but, um, you know, whatever, right? I'm going to call it Monara. So Monara, did Monara call the trade? Yes, all right? Is it an institutional candle? Absolutely. On the one hour there is, as you can see it, so I'm just going to make it that color. I'll make it this. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll make it blue for now. All right, so let's see if we can get a smaller entry on that. Is there a smaller one anywhere? There's even one down here we could probably wait for and get tapped in for. So you can either have it tight like this and potentially miss the move or just give yourself a bigger stop loss. So it depends what you want to do on that that part of it, right? Um, But this was an institutional candle on a, from, a, from a one hour standpoint, right? Number two, right? So is there a institutional level? Yes. Is there an 88%? Let's check, right? We're going to click from the bottom to the high of the move. We're going to drag across. The 88% is higher than our, than our entry here. So that's a bit, that's a bit, that's a bit shocking, right? But our entry is right on the Monara entry as well. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, we're cool. We'll wait. But let's see what happens when price gets down here. Now, if price gets down here and we're just going to wait for price to hit both these areas and again, wait for the break of structure, wait for the fair value gap and then go for the buy. So now we have it marked up. We're like, okay, cool. Well, we'll, we'll see. Do you know what I mean? We'll see, right? So, you know, if it, if it comes, then we'll, when it gets down there, we'll look for the buy, right? So now we're going to have that set up, right? Wanna have that set up currently is 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 going upwards, so we're just like, okay, cool, no problem, right? We got onto the one minute time frame. For those of you that trade gold, I know Eddie's gonna get ready to trade at one p.m. 
like a madman, but it works for him. So what it is, what it is, right? <coughs> this structure got busted by what move? This move here for a value gap between this candle, and this candle. You should be looking for a sell somewhere in that area come early morning slash tomorrow, right? Fibonacci from the high to the low, 88% right there too. So we go, okay, we, we love to see it. So this is going to be, all right, cool, short position from here, okay? Drag it to the high of the move, you know, give yourself some space. Sell down to the Monara entry. Trading is that easy once you understand what you're looking for. Break of structure, fair value gap, Monara entry, boom, boom, boom. And now we're waiting for the Monara entry to hit this area here, give us a break of structure, and then we go for the buy when it happens. All right? Some have stopped loss to 80. Some have <laughs> markets. Um, uh, do we look at high time frames first? Now, depend if you're a swing trader, yeah, I guess. For, for for these trades, just deal with the time frame that it gives you or go lower. So in this particular case, we was on the 50, we was on the, for the NZD, for the NZ, for the AUD NZD we was on, um, we was, it called it on the 15 minute, right? And the only reason we went down a time frame is because we couldn't find a decent institutional candle, right? There was this one here, but it was way too big. So we said, all right, cool, let's go down a time frame. And then we went down a time frame and then we found the smaller one. So that's the one we went for. Now, if you find an institutional candle that looks good on your time frame, use that. So I'll give an example. Um, that's not a good example. All right. So, you know, maybe this. No, that's not a good example either. Let's give you a, sometimes there's a nice one on the one hour, but it depends. It's to see if this currency pair has given any good ones. Um, for example, okay, cool. So this one here, if you just used the one, the well, okay, this was the five minute. So let's go to the one hour because maybe that will help. Okay, I forgot I was on the wrong time frame. Um, all right, so all right, cool. Let's use this one. So this here, institutional candle, one hour time frame. Come over. Price got hit. Did a little buy. Did wasn't that great? That's not a good example. Um, basically, you don't have to go on long story short. You don't have to go on high time frames. I, I can't bother to find an example off rip, but you don't. You no. You can so long you have all your reasonings to take the trade. You're good, right? The only people. That, so if you if you can't find what you're looking for on the current time frame that Manal was called the trade out on, go down to a smaller time frame. Okay. Um, so that's hopefully that explained how to use Monara. This is recorded. Um, does anyone who's left on here have any questions? There's 34 people. Do all 34 of you get it? If you have a question, now's the time to ask. I won't laugh at you. I won't cuss you out. I won't do banner. Ask the question. Do any of you have a question, no matter how silly, um, to go through this? And guys, by the way, uh, last last but not least, I don't. I'm no longer calling out signals per se in our chat. It's more going to be when a trade comes and I've done my confirmation that it works. I'm then going to say to you guys, guys, mark this trade up, okay? And then we're gonna wait for price to hit entry as a collective in the main chat, and then we're gonna wait as a collective for the fair value gap, and then we're gonna take the trade as a community when that when that opportunity comes. It's not gonna be a signal. Okay, this is one of those ones where because it's Monara and it's not like my own Forex knowledge, it's better that you guys walk through it and understand how to use it for yourself so that if I have to leave or Eddie's not available, you guys actually know how to do it for yourself. So it's going to be more of a communal project than it's going to be. Like people said, oh, we usually, you know, you start taking signals and I did it for a few days and I got anxiety. I was just like, I don't want to really want to do that. I rather just make sure you guys know how to use it. How do you know if you're going to use Monara entry as a target or do you, or if you're going to enter at the Monara? Okay. How do you know if you're going to use Monara's entry as a target or if you're going to use Monara entry, Monara enter? Okay. So if Monara ent Monara's entry is both, 
Okay. So in this particular example, that we're more intrigued with the zone itself that's been created after we have all of our confirmations. So Monaro's entry is this white line over here, right? Right. Our institutional candle is the zone over here, right? Our 88% is somewhere in the middle of that soup, right? From, from here to there, it's in the middle. So this whole area for us is the whole area is a, is a cell zone because my name is there, because the 88% is there, because the institutional account is there. So we don't really care where in that zone it sells from. We just care that it sells. And the only way we were going to enter that trade is if price hits that, the zone as a whole, and then gives us a fair value gap. Okay? There was a trade we was going to take earlier that we never got a break of structure, so we never took the trade, and it saved us from a losing trade. So that's why I'm very strict now that you guys might have to wait for the fair value gap to happen first. What time frame is best when looking at IC candles? Is there a tick box of time frames I can use? Um, I wouldn't say there's a best one, but the only trades I take on Monara and I, that are consistent, 15 minute, 30, one hour, four hour. More time, if you find a 30 minute, it's also available on the 15. So if you find a 30 minute, you know, and you're marking up and you're doing your institutional candle, go down to the 15 minute if you to get a better candle if you can. Um, but if you can't, just go up a time frame till you find the candles that you need in order for that to be a confirmation. Okay, hopefully that made sense. Did I explain it? Did, did that make sense? Or do you need me to go through it a different way? Um, hopefully that answers your question. What's the incomplete pattern for? Incompletes are patterns that are nowhere near happening. Okay. So nowhere near. Like some of these trades are in in the in the far future. Like it's found it. But price is nowhere near there. Like it's incomplete. Like it, it hasn't even come close to entry. So it considers it incomplete until it put it this way. I'll let you guys know this. Until um the candles touch the gray box, they it go it goes from okay, here's how it goes. It goes from here to incomplete. Once it gets once it passes TP1 and it gets between this area, TP1, and the gray box, it would then head, it would then get put in the mature section, right? And then as soon as it hits the gray box, it will get moved to the complete section. Does that make sense? So now it's on incomplete. It will get to like here. It will go to mature. It will get put in the mature folder. And then as it hits the gray box, then it will be in the complete folder. So that's why it's sometimes good to go through all three folders. But what I said to you guys at the beginning is I start on mature to see like what's gone, what's coming, what's close. If I can't find anything, then I go to incomplete or or complete. All right. Okay. Um. Uh, I think I just learned something. Correct me if I'm wrong. So every time there is a massive drop or a massive upburst, fundamentally, is price expected to fill the fair value gap left before potentially? Yes, it's called imbalance. So I don't really you don't really need to know what imbalance is per se with with me. That's more of a a Jeffrey question, but I'll give an example. Let's say that there's a massive buy here, right? Massive buy. This needs to get filled. This is this buy needs to get filled. So what's going to happen at some point, even if we buy up here, this sell is going to sell down to down here. Why? Because all of this, this area here needs to get filled by, there's no sales in this whole area, according to the one hour time frame. Right, so this area needs to get filled, so the banks aren't just gonna not fill that because the algorithm will move out of whack. So all of this here needs to get filled. The banks are gonna come; they're gonna come back and they're gonna fill that. What's probably gonna happen, God willing, and I don't know, I'm gonna say probably. What I hope is gonna happen is this: this is gonna happen, something like that. So we get hopefully we get up by, and then price sells down, and then there's another buy down here for AD entity at some point next week. I'm hoping. Right. All right. Because obviously I want to win this trade. <laughs> right. But obviously we don't control the market. Right. So that's that. Hopefully that made sense, though. Um, This trade looks like it might go against us, by the way. But is this and this is, this is how you know we've marked it up correctly. Do you guys see how it's just it's just at the zone? I think it's, I, I think this was a terrible time of day to take this trade. Um, I, I'm already in it. So it is what it is. But. The whole wickedy wickedy that's doing right now is evidence that where price is right now is a strong zone, 
but it's also evidence that the time of day is not conducive for what we're trying to do right now. So yeah, if we lose this trade, don't worry about it. But um, but yeah, just keep that in mind. Any other questions? Any other questions? Any other questions? Any other questions? If not, we'll close the call. But I want to make sure that, especially new people, you guys get it. You're all good. And then from now, for the rest of the week, we'll pull it into practice in motion in our group chat. But I just want you guys to understand what you're looking at when you, when we explain. Okay, guys, we got four confirmations. Okay, guys, we're waiting for the fair value gap. Okay, guys, we the the, the you know the fair value gap is there. Let's get ready, and then no one should be confused. Okay. Yes. So if you want to exit the trade now because there's about to be spread at 10, and I'm not sure what broker you guys are using, but at 10, the markets go a bit nuts. So if you want to exit the trade and then we enter the trade after that time, by all means do so. Um, this video will be posted on YouTube and then I'll post it in the main community chat so it won't get lost. You, If you're a part of our main community chat, like the overall mastermind one, you will see the video in there in the next 24 hours. Uh, but how do you make money, bro? What do you mean? How do we make money? I'm confused. What do you mean? Do you not know? I don't. I'm so, I'm so sorry. Explain that. Um, <laughs> I'm so. I don't even know how to respond. What do you mean? How do you make money? Um, Rocco, I wouldn't have a tight stop loss because if you do, and spread, I don't think you know what spread out is. Maybe you're new, but between ten and eleven p.m. They're like we go into the Asian session, and when we do that, your broker, the line, but you know, you see the red line and the blue line on your chart on your MT4, it's gonna go like this, right? And that happens every day at 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. to take people out of trades. It's just what brokers do, right? So having a tight stop loss would be counterproductive because they're gonna they're gonna take you out. So I would even go as far to say, give yourself a bigger stop loss until like. 11.30 p.m. and then go back to putting your stop loss back where it should be. If you can be bothered to watch the trade. I just don't know how to make money. You take a trade with, with understanding, you go into profit, you make money. I, I Hamza, you're not new. I'm I'm confused as to these questions. You, we talk, like I know you're not new. I lowered my stop loss as it looks like it wants to follow Monaro. I mean, yeah, that's fine. But again, as, as I explained in, in 50 minutes, there's going to be spread hour, which means that gap is going to increase like this. And you're going to see candles do choppity, choppity, up, down, up, down, up, down. If you have a tight stop loss, you might get taken out. That's what I'm saying. If you don't mind it and you just rather just, just keep it, just do that by all means. But I'm just saying, if, you, if you're not in deep profit by the time it hits 10 p.m., you might want to have a lower, a bigger stop loss. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Um, any other questions before we end the call? We've gone down from 54 to 25. So after people have gone, any other questions? Is it smarter to come out of the trade now or enter after then? Mm, I mean, it's relative. You can either stay in now and just increase your stop loss so you don't get taken out or risk missing the trade, but close the trade. It's up to you. It's up to you. I probably will keep it and just extend my stop loss. Um, but... Um, Okay, I don't know how to respond to this. Cool. Uh, and uh, Mike said he left. All right, cool. Yeah, leave. Just by all means, leave. We'll just watch it afterwards and then see what happens. You know what I mean? Um, worst case, price sells. But everything I just taught you guys, you can put into practice at this buy potential potential buy area. If it sells past that, because it might take these out, and then we can just enter here when we're now cause the buy down there. But I'd rather because of this break of structure to the upside, rather it bought. But you know, we'll see. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Um, and then go from there. So all we can do is we've done all our analysis, we've done all of our reasonings. There's errors being held. So hopefully it wins, and then we go from there. Okay. Uh no spread is nothing to do with that. So spread happened every day at a certain day. No, so spread is always there. So the gap that you currently see now on your MT4 is like tiny, right? But at 10 p.m. to 11 p.m., you're gonna see if you look at your MT4. It's going to be like this, right? So 
for that hour, spread is going to be disastrous. It's going to be very huge. And then at like 11 p.m., it's going to go back down to that. And it happens every single day. So what I'm saying is, if you're already in the trade, you might want to extend your stop loss a bit or get rid of it at 10. Leave it with no stop loss or have a bigger stop loss for one hour and then go back and put your stop loss onto your trade. Up to or just exit if you don't like the stress, right? So up to you. That you can you can work out work that one out for yourself based upon your own like tolerance and anxiety, right? Where shall we extend our stop loss to if we did do it? Uh good question. Um I mean, okay, let's let's go to a different time frame. Um broski, I'm gonna be real with you. <laughs> okay, look, 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 look. Um this was the low, this was the high. So my stop loss is just gonna be probably here, right? Just to give it a space to hit the 88% if it decides to do so. And that risk to reward is still one to three. So I'll still make 3% if this wins, but I'll probably have my stop loss down here um, during spread hour. Um, but yeah, I'm not gonna make a big hullabaloo about that. If, for those of you on the call, you might want to do that, but I'm not gonna go and change everything. If people lose, they lose. There's no one should be over leveraging anyway. Um, all right, cool, guys. So yeah, hopefully that makes sense. We see you guys on next week, Tuesday. We will be in contact with each other in the in the chat. So I'll catch up with you guys very, very soon. All right. See you guys in a bit. Peace.